cut the branches out reaching out that way. Freaking A! Hold on. You ah, say it, ah, Okay, okay. This is a uh, junior junior. <laughs> That's one of my biggest fear, the glue clock up in the tube, but it made me pick this version over like any other name guard. This is why I really don't like rest. Sure everything is kind of mixed up again. <laughs> All right, what's up, Reefers? Today we're back here in front of the 145 gallon tank again, and it is once again time to kind of cut back on some of these corals, namely the golden rod, which has just been taken off, which is excellent. And out of all the corals, I think today I'm gonna to try to pull a few frags out of the uh, golden rods, and then also maybe one or two frags out of the slime ball. I really like the shape, so I don't really want to disturb it too much yet, but there are certain parts of it that's kind of growing into all the corals that I need to address. So we do need to frag the slime ball back a little bit. As well as back there, you see the um, uh, Mandipora Forest Fire Digitata. It's kind of covering the pink lemonade, so we'll take one branch off that. And I kind of need to address the Malnificence. That's a pink SPS that looks beautiful. By the way, all these colors you're seeing right now, I try my best to capture how it actually appears in person. So they're not saturated or adjusted um, in any way. If anything, I try to make it as lifelike as possible. So they are that vibrant. I really uh, give a lot of credit to Reef Moonshiner methods. It's a, it's a dosing method that I have not talked too much about because of the implication. The system, it does cost a little money. Well, <laughs> it does cost a little money to kind of maintain because you target dosing certain trace elements. So I try not to make recommendation that is gonna cost people a lot down the road too heavily until I'm uh, uh, quote unquote completely sold on it. And in terms of moon, reef moonshine methods, it's pretty straightforward and I do see the result after using it for a year. I mean, SPS just immediately uh, lit up in terms of color. So I do think there's something to it. But again, I did not really do a strong push on it due to the cost or uh, ongoing cost. However, it does work. The bright pink SPS is the Malnificent that I got from TSA. And I think it is to a point where I need to start pulling frags Otherwise, it's gonna start running into the uh, uh, pink lemonade. And you hear that clicking noise, by the way, and that's coming from the MP10, I'm sorry. I need to uh, uh, maybe align it a little bit better or clean the um, the 3D printed cage a little bit better because uh, it's, it's being caught on something, so it's vibrating. But we'll address that. And I think I also need to pull a frag from the, maybe the golf is okay, actually. The golf bond side, that has been growing really well. And you can really hear the clicking noise from here. Um, the SPS for the most part are doing really well. I'm just trying to cut back some of the ones that kind of growing into each other, impeding each other's growth. So the main thing being the golden rod. Golden rod just taking off, which I'm really happy. And also look at this frag. This is a frag that I pulled maybe three or four months ago and is already growing into a mini colony. So I would love to uh, pull some frags and maybe plant some over there so we get a little cascading effect of golden rods, of gold just in the back. And then we'll plant some of these hot pink and orange uh, just sporadically throughout the uh, the scape, and we'll see how that looks. Um, anyways, uh, the other nice side effect is that these golden rod are still pretty much in demand. Uh, so I will be able to kind of recoup some of the costs that I've been dumping into the system. I've been lucky. I've been lucky. The running cost is not terrible. I'm mainly paying for the calc wassers. Um, by the way, I'm switching over to a non-aquarium source for calc wasser. I think it's Mississippi Lime. We're going to talk a little bit more about it. Um, my Reef Sensei Telegram turned me on to that versus uh, I've been using the BIOS uh, pharma, pharma grade Calwasser and we'll see if that's a big difference. Uh, but the cost, there's a huge difference in cost. But again, we'll talk a little bit more uh, later on in this video in terms of the Calwasser I'm switching to. And so besides Calwasser costs, I'm also paying for the uh, CO2 scrubber media. I'm also using a non-aquarium source. I'm using the uh, medical grade soda lime that I can show you a little bit later as well. And it also is a nice cost uh, cutting in terms of using that versus maybe like ice cap, etc. Ice cap is another popular one for CO2 scrubbing media, which is soda line. And I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit about that too. And for the medical grade uh, soda lime, I'm more confident in terms of recommend recommending it because I've been running it. And a lot of people have been using the same brand. Uh, so I'm happy to recommend that version in, in order to save some money if you're using a, a CO2 recirculating scrubber. Anyways, uh, first thing first, let's go ahead and make some frags. 
There's my trusty yellow gloves. Love these gloves. And these are the new ones because the last pair I used to rescue a crow. That rescue, got his neck. quotation mark. Rescue a crow that got his neck trapped. It's, it's dumpster days, so there's a lot of trash out there. Crows go through the trash, hate them for doing that. But one got caught, right? So it's struggling, it's hanging itself. Put on my yellow gloves, rescue them. Then what happened to that? Uba? My wife was like, you're not coming back in with these gloves. No, so I, I clean up, it. I ended up throwing them away and I got out of her new gloves, but it's for a good cause. Maybe you want to thank me? They ignored my trash for a good month or so. I don't think so. They poop on your car. So now they're back. They poop on your car. Poop on my car. Poop on my car. All right, so I've done done this many, many times, but this is one of the first time my wife's actually happened to be down here, able to hold my camera. It's been a long time since uh, she hold a camera for me. So this is a special occasion. Mark the calendar. Today is supposed to be a day of celebration. So what I want to do right now is kind of look at where the golden rod is growing towards and cut the branches out reaching out that way to discourage it from going that uh, growing downwards. Although, from what I hear, when you cut a coral, they tend to grow more <laughs> into that direction. So I'm not sure if I'm doing a disservice to the growth pattern or not. Either way, it is going to intercept other corals, so we're going to address them. One of the first thing that I want to cut is probably the branches that are going towards the malnefisence in the back, also as the uh, Mandipora digitifia. The second part of this is that I do want to retrieve these frag that I'm cutting. So that's the uh, that's probably the uh, trickier part. So I'm probably gonna cut this one right here, and this one right here, and this one right here. So we're gonna make quite a bit of frags. But the problem is, this is kind of, the branch is kind of, you know what, let me just use my hand. I don't think I need a clipper. How do you feel this too? I feel fantastic. <laughs> Caught COVID from Florida. Thank you, Florida. <laughs> So we've been uh, just stuck home. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's what you want. Ah. Okay, so I'm using a little tweezer so I can actually go in to this little crevice. And let me see if I can break it off right here. Oh, this is tough. Okay, there we go. And I broke something oh. else too. So uh -oh. use a little piece. You see these little dangling bits? That's Junior. This is Junior right here. I'm gonna keep this for myself. Believe it or not, that little piece is gonna turn into a full scale colony. I bet you within a year in my tank. All right, so that piece opened up a lot of space. I can re finally get to these guys right here. I want people to be able to see this coral. So I'm gonna discourage, I'm gonna pull this piece right here. Uh oh, I think I did more than I, I was supposed to. Uh -oh. <laughs> Holy oh. crap! All right, <laughs> that that works Not out. The whole thing. That works out. This can break into three or four frags, so this works out. That's gonna, this thing is gonna put neon through college. Oh, no. can we do a Japan Not trip. Not that much. Yeah, she's picturing me a Japan trip. Yeah. I think one more thing. It's a. Uh, want to want to dog sit for us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and another one I really want to frag is this guy right here. The Forest Fire Digitata is kind of growing in the way of the pink lemonade. But for that one, it's really brittle. So I'm going to use a clipper so that wherever I want it to break, it'll ideally break. I'll say it's 50 50, to be honest. So let me try to break this piece off right here. Can I try? No, please don't. Okay, one. <laughs> Two. Ah, oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be really careful. I don't want to stick my clumsy fingers in there. So I'm gonna use a tweezer to pick it up. Uh, I don't tend to frag the forest fire digitata too much, simply because in terms of demand, there's not much of a demand for these guys. These guys grow so fast uh, in everybody's tank. So it seems like everybody has it already. So I just kind of let it grow. Uh, the other thing I want to frag is the malnefisant. That one I want to be really careful too. Because if you've been following this channel, you know it has a reputation of me fragging. For every frag, I frag twice. Meaning that when I want, whenever I want to pull one frag of Magnificent, the first one, first time always disappears into the tank. But for whatever reason, that is the track record. I'll frag it, the frag will disappear. So let's try it one more time. Let's do, let's do this piece. Ah, actually, I'm kind of torn. 
I wouldn't want to frag this one because it's growing into the pink lemonade. Yeah, let's do it. And hopefully this time the frag won't disappear. Oh, I just broke the pink lemonade. It's not pink. Ah, not there we go. Lemonade. Okay, it's gonna disappear okay. again. Hold on. I'm balancing it. <laughs> Freaking hey! Hold on. You ah, said no. Ah, okay, okay, it's caught. Let me do it real quick. Uh oh, drop. Alright, watch it, watch it. See where it drop. And the Maleficent? It's a fantastic, beautiful SPS. It's a nice hot oh. pink. And I really, oh, you, I really like his name. And again, it's a really quote unquote expensive SPS. Oh ah! no, man, are you serious? I'm gonna no, use my favorite gray grabber link in the video description below. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. I think I saw it here. The next thing you're gonna do is to yeah, right break the light. Yeah, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there. There it is. Having trouble getting it? Yeah, I got it. So we, uh, we broke the curse, probably because my wife is here. We broke the curse. This is the first cut on the Malneficent that I successfully pulled the first frag out. Each time whenever I clip it, the first frag always is gone somewhere. So we got it. Okay, pink lemonade, let's see. Let Wait, see if you can... oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I broke a couple little keys right here. Let me just pull these out. So while I was tussling with the Malneficent, a couple, a couple tiny pieces fell off. So I went ahead and saved them as well because those have potential as well. They can grow. It'll take a little bit longer, but they'll grow. Uh, I want to make a frag of the pink lemonade because they are running into things. Let me see if I can pull this frag right here. This right here. It's kind of in the battleground. Let's see. What do you think? This one? Should I pull this one? It's not or pink. this one? I know it's called, I don't know why it's called pink lemonade, but it's called pink lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in certain tank it's pink, but not in mine. Actually, these are growing well. I'm just gonna leave it. Something broke. Oh no! What the heck? This is a uh, junior junior. That's a stressful part about pulling them out and actually capturing the frag before they fall into the sand bed or into other corals. Tough part is over. Now the second part is mounting them onto the frag mounts. Not frag pluck, frag pluck. Can't speak. All right, thanks yeah. wife. Trip to Japan. <laughs> Saving up for a house, we don't have that. All right, let's go. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're not moving. <laughs> You're stuck here forever, oh, ever, ever. Goodness. Come in, right? Come in. Come in. All right, so here is this round of harvest. We got some nice uh, golden rod. That is actually a nice chunk. I'm gonna split them into respectable size frags. We got the um, uh, Malneficent. I'm really happy to finally be able to pull a decent size frag out. And we got the uh, Forest Fire Digitata as well as two tiny piece of the pink lemonine that I accidentally broke off. To hold the frag while I mount them, like you've seen before, I used one of these guys that I got from Amazon. For frag plug, I've tried different types. I really like the Ocean Wonders that I also got from Amazon. I'll link below if you're interested. I like the black coloration one because I'm not a huge fan of the white plug. And I like the larger size of the two of these frag plugs simply because it gives more stability if I do decide to put them in the sand bed. And also I just like how it kind of stands off. Uh, it sets the frag off uh, from the surrounding, if that makes sense at all. But anyways, that's the one I prefer. For glue, I've been bouncing around using the like dollar store glue, the Pilot Lab glue, and the uh, BLS. So far, I actually really like the BLS one. It does not really clog up. That's one of my biggest fear, the glue clog up in the tube, but no problem so far. Um, I like this, and it lasts quite a while, so I may actually buy more. And for Instasets, Instaset and this Instaset, they're all the same, so I just went ahead and got a Instaset just so that uh, the super glue can dry immediately as soon as I spray. Actually, it does not dry immediately, but dry a little bit faster. Anyways, you've seen me do uh, fracking tutorials before, so I'm not gonna do it again here. I'm just gonna do them real quick and then I'll get them in the tank and we'll talk about them. Oh, almost forgot. Tool of choice. Bone cutter. So this is a bone cutter I got from BLS. This is the medium sized one that I've been using. Really like it. But as you can see, nowadays I have trouble getting in between SPS branches without 
knocking other things over. So I may need to invest in some other tools as well in terms of pulling frags out of the tank. But again, we'll talk about that later on in this video. <laughs> Oh, I'm Ooh. such a good wife. <laughs> Shorty does this. this. In fact, this I think this is the first time. By the way, that was a chicken what? essence. That was chicken what? essence. That was chicken okay, essence. Okay, no more recording. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, right now we are mounting these guys. Look at these baby frags. These are the things that we just broke off. Nothing goes to waste. Uh, won't be able to sell these at all. But I'll be growing these out. And I think I'd be really proud if I can actually grow these out and these actually grow up to be a nice little colony. So this is the pink lemonade. You can... Is it pink? Have you ever seen anything so small? Uh, Don't yeah. go there. <laughs> this tiny little guy. And normally maybe people would just throw it away, but nope. We're gonna, we're gonna save these. Uh, let me see. There's another baby frag, so... I actually do these lay down. I've done experiments laying down versus uh, vertical in terms of mounting the frags. And I think like the vertical looks way more impressive initially. But the ones I laid down, they have a really strong base. When they get going, they look much more impressive in the long world. So these guys, because they're so small, if I do them vertical, I'm afraid that they may they may get blown off and knock, knocked away really easily, so I'm gonna just lay them down. And again, I'm not in a rush to uh, try to get these guys out of my tank because they're tiny. It's gonna take a while. But I know the environment is good. These corals, the mother colony grows fantastic, really fast in my tank, so it should not take too long. So just pay attention to these two guys right here. Golden rod right here, pink lemonade right here. Pink lemonade, that actually looks yellow. That's lemon tea. Yeah, lemon tea. So you prefer laying down? I prefer laying down. I knew it. Yeah, it's <laughs> less work. You know, <laughs> fantastic. All right, right now I'm gonna address the uh, awkward MP10 that's clicking right now. I think uh, it's just a matter of aligning the west side, but I'm gonna use this opportunity to also upgrade the flow. Uh, so you can see right now the cone for the MP40, uh, oh, MP10 is kind of like being captured by the golden rods and that's pretty much it. So I do have a extra MP40 just kind of sitting on the shelf right now. Initially, I do have two MP40 for this tank, but I deem it a little bit too strong at the time. But for now, right now, I think it is right time to switch it back. So uh, one thing I am doing is that I actually bought one of these uh, Neat Aquatics 3D printed uh, limpets. Uh, guards. So let me show you real quick. I think I briefly talked about these in the past. Uh, it's basically, number one, it's gonna be a, an enemy guard for me because I do have the uh, Colorado Sunburst enemy just kind of hanging out back there. Just one of these days, it's gonna let go and it's gonna get sucked into the pump. And when that happens, I wanna make sure that it does not actually get through to the pump because this is a direct replacement of the wet side cage as this guy right here. So a lot of these 3D printed lamb guard goes over the cage, but this one, you actually takes off the cage and just screw it, back, screw it on directly. And if this one is anything like the other ones I got from them uh, last year, then it should be just like a direct replacement. It should fit like a gloves. The other thing, that I that made me pick this version over like any other name guard is that this actually modified the flow that comes out of the MP40 in this case. So they have a regular version where it does not really modify the flow that much. It just do shoot out a cone of water. This version supposedly make the water flow wider, make the pattern wider, so a little bit more gentle for things that's right in front of it, and then push a little bit more water to the side as well. So I think that would be. Um, that works a little better in my tank here where I'm just using a two power head to drive flows left and right on t uh, along with the return. If I have more pumps, then maybe just the regular one is fine, but because I, I'm really trying to minimize the amount of equipment in tank, uh, I'm just gonna see if I can rely on the two MP40s with these uh, wide float adjustment. Now, this, this one I bought. That one I also bought. Actually, in fact, all these I bought, okay? I bought, there's no discount, nothing. I just went on BOS and bought them. And this is, pricey for what it is. This right here is $39 uh, for the MP40. For the MP10, it's $29. And for a 3D print product, it is pretty pricey. However, it does seems to do what it claims, number one, to keep things away from being sucked into the MPs, and number two, to kind of like uh, massage the flow pattern a little bit so that it's a little bit more gentle. 
when I was using MP, uh, AP, AP Plus, it has a certain dye in there so you can actually see the water flow coming out and it does seems to do what it claims by making the flow a little bit more spread out, seems a little bit more gentle. So um, for what it is, yes it is pricey but at the same time, I feel like it brings enough value that okay, um, it's worth it, so let's go ahead and get it. So here it is. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and slap this onto the MP40 and swap it in. And the trick now is to kind of tweak the flow that it's not too much of a um, big change for the corals. And I may just have it really low first and then slowly dial it up as I see how the corals respond. Oh man, look at this beautiful crotch shot. Uh, here, let me just show you real quick. Just twist and this comes out. This guy right here, let me see. That's it. Same deal. Put it in there and twist. Good to go. Just like that. Now it it is much larger. It is much larger and unsighty, but it does protect the uh, your inverts and fish, and also it does well. It's supposed to adjust the flow so that it's a little bit wider. So it is a trade-off. And here it is, much larger than the MP10, but I think it's gonna provide a uh, much better flow for this tank. And hopefully the corals will appreciate it. Uh, because once again, like I mentioned before, high light, high flow, high nutrients, those are the keys. Like if one of them is short, then tank is gonna be off balance and may have trouble. So I think uh, this much broader gentle flow is nice. Uh, one thing I really like about the Mobius app is that when I set the uh, strength of the pump, it actually tell me how many gallon per hour it should be pushing. So by kind of cross-referencing what the MP10 was pushing, it's about 1900 ma uh, gallon per hour, I set the um, MP40 to do that as well, which I think was at about 13 of, don't quote me on it, but I think it's like 13 or 14% strain versus the MP10, I think it was at about 60 or 70. Really rough estimates, but that's roughly where it is, but I'm using the, mile, uh, the, the gallon per hour uh, potential um, or what it should be pushing as a gauge to kind of set it back to where it was before as I slowly ramp it back up. Oh, look at the, the way the cold flow is already kind of different. But we're gonna let it sit for uh, a couple of days to see how the corals adjust and then slowly dial it up and then I'll keep you guys posted later in this video. Okay, we're doing a secret mission right now. Come on. So, like I mentioned, the Aptasia eating foul fish, after it finished eating Aptasia, is a high chance of it going after <laughs> coral. So right now it's actually at night. Let's see if the foul, fi the foul fish is still sleeping right there. Look, look, look. Right there. So we scouted out where the foul fish normally sleeps. It's right there. I don't see it. It's right there. I can't see it. Yeah, it's right there. You see it? Here, come on. Hey, come on, hurry up. Hey, 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 Really quiet. Karen, Karen, go. File fish should not have spikes, right? I think it's a tang that has. Try it. I'm gonna use my hand. Let's see if I can just scoop it. You ready? So you take YouTube with the young hand that gay die. Lingo say I'll show you a soak to tell her. Right there, right there. It's, it's moving. Be young hand. Hold on. Maybe I use gloves, man. Gloves. Your hand? Use your nets, lad. Your nets. Yeah, why are you using your hand? Never mind, we're gonna use net. Oh, I can see it. Can right? You see it? Man, I can't... You can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. It's like that. Hey, I'm going to turn it off. Hold on, let me use a stick, something to stick it's it in. It's hard, man. You can't turn it off. This is... Let's see. 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 Foul fish, they like to bite onto things at night. So that they don't get blown around. So... Yeah, I can totally use my hand to grab it. See, I'm just pushing it into the net. Come on, what's happening? Come on, go into the net. Go into the net. I'm giving you an even better home. Fine, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 o
Okay, we're gonna put it here. Oh, Definitely cup bigger. Why is it upside down? It's dead. Hey. Uh oh. Okay, all right, let's get it down. All right, come, come, come. Uh oh. Let me see. Okay. Daddy, cue it. No, 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 it's okay. It's dead. Yeah, right here, right here, right here. I can't see it. Okay, okay, hold on. We're gonna hold him right here. Right there, come. Could I go like that? I okay, okay, look. All right, buddy. It's right there. It's Neon's butterfly fish. Okay, let me see okay. Leon's head here. Okay, so there's a lot of really good food for this fish right here. Yeah. I'm gonna let him out. He likes eating Aptasia and anemone. Is that? Uh oh. Uh oh. He's okay. totally stuck. Come on. Ah! 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 Yeah. Okay, I'll go spike here though. You want to go to the spike? Okay. Okay. I caught some algae. There you go. Oh, I'm so fishy. Alright, sorry, fish file so fish. But. Say so. Perfect, that sort of. So sleepy. So sleepy. <laughs> the release was kind of messy. I should have used my hand. Uh, but yeah, the fish is now in this little refugium. Sai. Probably. So. Yeah, my so right hand. Same thing all the time. Fish is in the refugium. Translate, and wash your hand before touching my son. There's a lot of uh, mice shrimps and also especially a pages down in the refugium. It's really perfect. So it's going to stay there for a little bit until you clear out the refugium. And then later on, if I start seeing Aptasia in the main tank again, I'll net it back into display tank and so on and so forth. And if it actually clear out both systems, <laughs> a one system up and down, then we'll kind of loom them out to fellow reefers to clear out the tangle of tissues. Daddy, Perfect. you kill him. You kill him. I did not kill him. <laughs> yeah. He's right there. Ah, look at how calm the water is. I actually shut off the MP40s to feed the corals. I've, I do this like once a week. And what I do is, uh, here, let me show you. It's a crazy mixture of reef nutrition, um, oyster feast, which is one of my favorite products from them, as well also with the um, Phyto Feast Live. So it's those two products, uh, I keep them in the fridge, and I mix in some of these uh, LOS. Uh, I think it's the Nano Fish. I've tried different type of LOS uh, frozen food. They're all fantastic. Uh, looks really clean. So I do a LOS and also put in some uh, reef roids. So this is kind of like my super mix, really dirty mix, which I do once a week lightly. But today I'm gonna feed a little bit heavier because I'll be doing a water change um, either tomorrow or the day after. So we got some time. So Coral loves it. I shut off the main uh, flow so that things are kind of calm and I can feed the tank. And I use my super long, super long turkey baster. It actually have extension that just kind of fit over the tip. Uh, do not ask me what this is because I completely don't remember what this was. I'll try to find it online. If I find it on Amazon, I'll have it in the link below. But I've been using this a lot, uh, really handy when I don't want to get my hands wet. Uh, and the corals that I tend to feed, uh, the torches, um, I feed the, look at that, the Colorado sunburst and enemy. I'll squirt some in there. I'll squirt some on the euphilias. I'll squirt some on the um, uh, Ganyporus. I feed mainly the reef roids. Um, I mix up my mixture, sometimes a little bit thicker in the beginning, but as time goes on, as I start feeding, sometimes I'll put some water in there to kind of like make it a little bit more liquid. Uh, but initially it's pretty heavy paste. And I also try to squirt some onto my mushrooms as well, like the dry curds and these uh, Indo mushroom, uh, Rodactus. Um, I think these are called Spitfire. I think that's the quote unquote official name. Um, so I'll do those and also do the OG bounce. Um, and clam, usually I don't target feed because I don't want to clog up the gills. So whatever they catch from the water column, uh, Usually, I've heard different things. I've heard that when clam do these, that means they're actually getting food in. But uh, the other part is that when they do this, is maybe they got something a little bit too, the particulate maybe a little bit too large. So they, they kind of like getting them back out. But I've also heard that this is what they do when they eat. So which one it is, I'm not sure. And I think I'm really interested in seeing, sorry, it's totally random, is look at the Montipora. The Monty cap has grown into the clam shell. I've always been wondering what's gonna happen. Would it start encrusting onto the clam? Because I think that was actually one of the first time the clam actually moved uh, this week. So I was fully expecting that to break off some of the uh, money pork cap, but looks like 
it's gentle enough coming back that it's uh it's not really causing distress to the uh, formation right here, the encrusting right here. So I'm really interested to see what's gonna go happen here. This reminds me of, you know, the DVD logo that bounces around uh, on your screen like this, and people are just kind of waiting for it to hit the corner. It's kind of like that. What's gonna happen? I don't know. Anyways, random tangent. Let's feed my corals. Oh, that's tough, I need my wife here. But here is, let me see if we can do this right. I'm gonna drop some of these foods into the OG bounce. And man, this is why I really don't like rats because they actually go into the corals and try to pick them off. And I'll be honest, I don't know how many of these are actually sticking, but uh, whatever it is, <laughs> these are not sticking at all, dude. I think the return flow may still be a little bit strong. But what I like to do is just kind of Give all the corals a bit of a squirt right here because it's not just the chunky food. I also got reef roids, phyto feast, oyster feast. So everybody's feasting. Totally forgot this ginormous elegance coral baby from Jim. This is actually a natural baby. Um, a couple years back, he took uh, Elegant's Coral that was not doing well in my tank to his tank. As always, he rescued it as doing fantastic. And it naturally dropped a baby. It just dropped a polyp on his embed with a little skeleton structure. So that is really, really cool. I've never heard of this happening. Um, and he gave, it, gave that baby to me. I was like, hey, here's, here you go. Here's the offspring. <laughs> and look at the size of this now. It's growing really well in this corner. But I got to feed this guy too. This guy eats. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, water change days. So a while back, I was doing a nutrient test on this tank and nutrients was levels high. Nitrates was about 30, phosphates 0.16. I since ran uh, GFO for a week and a half and the phosphate is back down to 0.11, but nitrate still sits around 30. And there's not really a really effective way of taking out nitrate besides what I'm already doing right now, which is um, refugium. So with that in mind, I figure a uh, water change is finally in order to kind of bring the level down a little bit and usually whenever I do water change I do a, a decent amount maybe like 20% or 25% just so that it makes more of a difference versus if I do 10% just, just like scratching the issue so um, I have been jumping between different salt brand because honestly salt is salt for me so far except for the um, Red Sea Coral Pro Salt, which is not this one right here. And I did a video on this a little bit earlier. This is back in my heydays where I'm not as experienced. Um, and I thought, okay, a lot of people seem to like the Red Sea Coral Pro, and let me just get it. And I did not pay attention to details. And the detail is that the Red Sea Coral Pro Salts, the DKH is actually around 10 or 11, which is way higher than what a lot of people keep their reef tank at, um, myself included. So when I first did a water change with the new salts. My tank, the corals looks kind of pissed off. I'm like, okay, maybe I see something wrong with the water. Let me do one more water change. Did not realizing it's the, um, it's the uh, uh, elevated DKH. So I did one more water change and oh man, the corals even more pissed off and that's kind of like a downward spiral. I was like, oh, must be something wrong with water. And what do you do first? Water change. So I did one more water change. Totally my fault. That was uh, that was totally my fault, and it's like one of those newbie mistakes where uh, the name of the salt called Coral Pro, so it's like oh, it must be really good. The review seems good, and uh, nobody really pointed out that the alkalinity was really high for that salt. So since then, I've tried different salts, and uh, I settled on the Red Sea Blue Bucket. Uh, it is Red Sea salts, ideal for SPS dominant system and um, it sits at about 8 dkh. Uh, so I've done, I've used this uh, for quite a while in the 45 gallon cube tank and I switch over to RPM and later on the Tropic Marin. Now, um, I since used the HNW salt for the 145 gallon tank um, with beautiful results. I mean, salt is salt for the most part since I dose trace and stuff like that. So I don't pay too much attention to those as long as the salt is, doesn't have a lot of uh, impurity. 
but these days most salt is okay. So this time around, I'm going back to the good old Red Sea Blue Bucket Salt, simply because I really, really like the design of the buckets, of how it looks. I just think the bucket is absolutely beautiful looking, and I know it's a weird reason to go for the salt, but the uh, the basic parameter matches up to what I want, which is a 8 DKH and a cal calcium around 40 to, uh, 420. So this is fantastic. The only downside, the buckets arrive cracked. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't really impact the salt inside because there is a uh, plastic bag and I can also use the Tropic Marin uh, bucket that I still have. I have the Tropic Marin. I also really like the bucket design that's why I use the Tropic Marin salts. This, is, this makes me sad because I really picked this salts. One of the reasons is the beautiful bucket um, that you can see right here. But it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and um, use the salt. But uh, well, one reason I really want to film is that one of the things that I, I've been doing with the salt that I receive is that you need to mix it well. So when I receive the salt, I like to kind of just like roll it around a little bit, turn it upside down. And even when I open up the salt, I uh, scoop it a little bit because the reason is that uh, they mix the salt when they're dried up, they add all the different additives to add the trays and whatnot. And while it's being shipped, the heavier stuff settled to the bottom. And I think, um, let me see if I can get it right. The finer, the, the heavier stuff, larger particles go to the top. The heavier stuff go to the bottom, larger particles go to the top. For example, um, when you have a, a bottle of like sand and a little rock and stuff like that, if you just keep shaking it, over time the rock just tend to like float to the top, right? Some of the pebbles, just the way it is. So that's why it's so important when you receive new salt, just kind of like roll it around, make sure at least as, as good as, as you could, just make sure everything is kind of mixed up again versus all the things has settled one another. Otherwise, when you do water change using the salt without mixing it up, you have kind of like a jumble of parameters based on where you are in the buckets. Anyways, just that's one of the things that I do. Um, man, I, yeah, I'm sad, man. It's beautiful buckets. Green chromas too, one of my favorite fish. Favorite showing fish at least. Yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and get this done. All right, so here we got all the tools laid out, ready for the water change. And once again, I am like a broken record. One of my favorite tool in terms of um, reef keeping, right, in her general cleaning is this guy right here. This is a Home Depot bucket head, and this is really affordable. I think um, the head unit is about 30 bucks, if I remember right, or 30 nine maybe. And all you need is a five gallon bucket. You just like slap this thing on here. Let me just open it real quick. You see what it looks like down here. So you just slap this thing onto any five gallon bucket that with these kind of uh, uh, lids right here. Slap it on and you have a hose. And this thing is a wet dry vacuum. And what I'll do is basically I'll disconnect the sump from the um, display tank. I'll harvest some of the uh, uh, macro algae. I got the mini grape uh, macro algae in this case. And I want to make sure I watched where the livestock is. And in the refugium, I have a uh, ammo crab and I also have the file fish I moved down here. Yes, it is still alive. I saw him yesterday, but right now it's hiding. So I want to make sure that I know where it is and potentially move them to a different compartment first before I start siphoning. And the reason I do this is because if you look down there, there's a lot of detritus that kind of accumulates over time because the uh, the flow in my sump is pretty slow. I like a slower flow through uh, for the sump just so that it has more contact time with the skimmer. So I feel like I pull more things out. Um, and also all, all these uh, macroalgae will trap things. And um, when detritus uh, get trapped in the macroalgae, sometimes they just get locked up in there and sometimes just kind of sink to the bottom of the, uh, of the sump. And that's why some, once in a while, I do still like to do water change just to address this. Uh, of course, there are ways to clean the sump without pulling water out, meaning you don't have to do water change. For example, you can start a siphon and you put a little um, sock on the other end. So it just capture all the stuff that's coming through and water goes back in the tank. So you don't do water change. But in my particular case, because I want to address the uh, high nitrate anyways, so I figured a water change will work and I'll use this opportunity to also clean out the refugium as well as some of the uh, biomedia. For biomedia, I rarely do this, but once in a while, I pick up some of the uh, the chunks and kind of just like swish it around in the uh, in tank water. Make sure this is uh, tank water and uh, put it back in because uh, I do not want the pores to really clog up. Uh, so that's, that's the extent I do in terms of cleaning biomedia. But I don't do that often. However, I do like to siphon uh, my sum at least every three months or so. 
All right, so I turn off the return pump, meaning that the sump is disconnected from the display tank. I want to do this because as I'm pulling out macro algae, all the all the stuff that's kind of trapped in the macro algae is gonna get stirred up. I don't want them to get blown back into the display tank because I'm gonna do a deep cleaning of the refugio. So I'm gonna pull some of these macro algae out. Um, I don't like to pull too much at once because I feel like if I take too much of the macro algae away uh, all at once, then it's gonna really upset the balance of the ability to break down excess nutrients. So I harvested these and I think uh, we should be okay. I want to show you how effective and how quickly the uh, wet dry vac is and it's going to be quick. So all right, here's the switch. Throw it. Sucked up some micro, uh, macroalgae as well. Anytime I also want to make sure I pull the hose out of the water because I, otherwise, uh, even if you stopped it because of the uh, siphoning effect, it will keep going. And this is about half buckets. I got a little bit nervous and turned it off a little bit early so I can go in again. Um, let's see. But as you can see, I already cleaned up that portion right there. So this, this whole, <laughs> This vacuum right here, it's uh, really, really potent, and uh, I'm a huge fan of it. Tremendous value, and it's fantastic for uh, some cleanup, especially with summers on the ground. And it's harder to siphon because if you siphon from this this height, it's a little bit slower versus if you siphon from up here because gravity, right? Uh, so this is one of uh, my top, my top recommendation in terms of like tool that is not really aquarium related but works really well in aquarium in terms of working with salt water the last bucket that i have uh, lasted me five years uh and i was really rough with it i did not clean it each time i uh did a water change i just kind of packed it away without even rinsing fresh water it lasted five years near the end it was shocking me a little bit sometimes when i push it i was like oh i get a little shocked so i was like all right it's time to swap it out so i got a new one and this one hopefully will last me another five years Oh, look at that. Nice and clean. Well, not nice and clean, but at least you can see the bottom is white. Uh, where it was like just like a mud brown before. So I think um, I did enough damage, clear out enough macroalgae. So I'm going to start putting water back in. These days I like to use uh, just like a little, where is it? This guy right here. I like to just do it like this. And I just flush it. Uh, I'll keep doing this and then I may just uh, siphon it out one or two more times because as I do this sometimes I flush out some of the uh, detritus so I can clean it a little bit more so it's a really manual process for me but I enjoy it I just listen to podcasts uh, read podcasts and while I do this so it's, uh, it's kind of therapeutic as well anyway so let's chat a little bit more uh, once the tank has a chance to really wake up and also for myself as well once I have a chance to wake up um, in fact I'm gonna go and start cutting these videos together now because if I don't do it and do it at the very end it just huge backlog and I kind of lose motivation if I don't kind of put the uh, fresh recording into the computer and process it right away it's like oh this is old news already why I'm still working on it so I get that mentality even though some of the stuff is still relevant so what I like to do is that as I record it I put it in the computer and just kind of uh, edit it uh, put in a timeline so that it's kind of like at least for me it's more like a diary and the final output is the end product of maybe say this past month what happened versus like at the end of the month I go back and start processing all the video that's not how I work I like to do real-time stuff but unfortunately I just don't have enough time to in real time export it and um, show you guys Do you guys actually care about the music by the way that's actually one of my really big pain point I hate messing with the music uh, do you do you guys actually care about the music or you just want to hear me talk and listen to the crowd Sam let me know let me know or if maybe it's time if I could hire someone or just partner up with someone who can do that portion of the editing like I can I'm perfectly happy to put the clips together but if there's someone who's interested in like picking up the music from epidemic sounds put it in and put in like the title the ending and stuff like that then dude I can crank out at least like double if not triple the amounts of videos I'm putting out right now because the music really holds me back and to be honest I think I'm procrastinating on that part too because it's not my favorite thing to do in terms of uh, editing I like putting I like filming I like putting uh, the clips together but the more post processing stuff not really my cup of tea anyways tangents let me go ahead and put this on the computer and start editing Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>